Gre greetings, everyone. Hello. Uh, good evening. Uh, thanks for coming out on this uh, cold, crappy, rainy night. My name is Jason Pettis. I'm the owner of the Chicago Center for Literature and Photography. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, coming out for our live episode of a podcast, Dreadful. Uh, this is a 12-part uh, serial fiction audio book anthology that we're doing at the center right now. We're releasing every episode on Monday for free uh, uh, from September, beginning of September to the uh, end of November. And we're doing one of these episodes live uh, tonight here at Coinbase. So my thanks very much, first of all, to everyone here at Coinbase for having us. Uh, we're also not going to be mentioning them during the taping itself, but I wanted to thank our special effects crew back here, Emily Jones, Kelly Pierce, Jacob Knapp, and Miles Tans are on the applause sign for tonight. <laughs> we're also going to have a point at where we're going to ask all of you to groan as part of the sound effects for one of the stories. So Miles will also hold up that sign when it's time for uh, that. Uh, I think if we're ready, we're going to go ahead and start the recording. Uh, uh, so uh, we're just going to run straight through once that starts. So thanks again for coming out. As soon as we start, you got to get a, get the big healthy round of applause. Okay, so wait till Jason starts. It says thank you to everyone, and then you can hold up the sign, and we'll all clap. Okay. I'll, for this first one, I'll point to you when it's time to hold up the sign. All right. You ready? Yeah. Welcome to a podcast dreadful from the Chicago Center for Literature and Photography, episode four of twelve, being recorded in front of a live audience at Quimby's Bookstore in Wicker Park. For recaps of the stories you'll hear today and more about their authors, please visit cclapcenter.com slash dreadful. I'm your host, Jason Pettis. Welcome. Our first story today, part four of 12 of Steam House by David Schneiderman. In our last episode, we finally saw a demonstration of the system, the augmented reality machine holding together the post-apocalyptic society in the Chicago suburbs where our story is set. And now the continuation performed by the author. Thank you, thanks to Jason and uh, CCLAP for organizing this, and Liz and everyone at Quimby's for hosting us. Uh, one thing to say is buy a book before you leave. You're here, buy a book. Buy many books. Uh, Jason at one point was corresponding with me over email and asked me if I could help write the explanations, the summaries of my chapters, because he said something like, I don't know what the hell is going on. So I knew <laughs> my, my job was, was working. This is uh, part four of a piece called Steam House, as he said which is loosely based on my street in Highland Park where I, for years there was a foreclosed home that no one lived in and it was getting overgrown and lush with mosquitoes and raccoons were living inside. And so I had a little fantasy that the block took it over, became its own independent nation and made that their capital. <laughs> and uh, this is what it is. So there's two characters, I'm just telling you this so you can, can follow along. Um, Sinjin, which is spelled St. John is one, and he is the uh, mastermind behind this area called Chicago instead of Chicago. And he's invented something called the system, which is some sort of augmented reality, virtual reality device. It's a little unclear as of now. And his underling is a guy named John At, like the at sign, Thin, like John Thin, but John At Thin. And this is John At Thin musing upon various things going on. There's also uh, some Wikipedia entries about steam in here, which I'm gonna read in a slightly different voice. All right, that's the long preamble. For technical deposition on a system, Sinjin, the once and future civil engineer, spends every other week in the past of his own life stream, commuting in a backflash to Manila through augmented reality mechanisms, his company pioneered first in the Filipino countryside last decade, and which now, as part of what Sinjin calls the system, stretches through much of the old Orient and Pacific island nations. Steam is the technical term for water vapor, the gaseous phase of water which is formed when water boils. Proportionately, and as Sinjin never tires of demonstrating, the trick is to shift the computer monitor from stationary positions, which has happened in due course as the post-American populace adopted smartphones, and further integrate these screens into smaller and smaller units. 
Water vapor cannot be seen, though in common language it is often used to refer to the visible mist of water droplets formed as this water vapor condenses in the presence of cooler air. Because of this and because he is absent in his own time, Sinjin practices a manner of smacking his lips with his tongue. Instead of looking at the screen to read a set of virtual data or computer rendering, he is telling John at Thin even now, the idea is to look through the screen as if it were a lens uniting the world of, object of objective phenomena with packets of shifting data which can be expressed as anything from a string of binary code to the most palpable physical material. Strictly speaking, in terms of chemistry and physics, true steam is invisible, like Sinjin. Reluctantly, like placing a plastic wrap film over the rotting dinner of the world, thick with ergo, Sinjin explains to John At Thin in the most indirect of ways. And so he also loves this steam-powered house, which cleans itself of each collective ejaculation, like a dumb beast spitting its poison into a swirl of mass visualization. At lower pressures, such as in the upper atmosphere or in the top of high mountains, water boils at a lower temperature than the nominal 100 degrees Celsius, 212 degrees Fahrenheit, at standard temperature and pressure. Dooley Sinjin's entire time stream all takes place under a sun grown terribly close in the post-American world. Just a nothing of a degree or so of excess tilt, yet enough to make the rules of the old world fade. A grape bunch on a vivisected slice of porcelain china. The change of tilt can't even get a whiff of scientific consensus, but nonetheless, even so, despite it all, things feel suitably different in post-America, in Chicago, since Sinjin so lovingly applies to the system. If heated further, steam becomes superheated steam. Under these circumstances, the act of Chicago itself becomes a method to produce difference, to make its residents feel in a world of the smashingly unfamiliar just a bit the way they used to without their knowing that the feeling is certainly, accordingly, and as a result now past. The enthalpy of vaporization is the energy required to turn water into the gaseous form when it incomes, increases in volume by 1,600 times at standard temperature and pressure. Ergo, that's the story Sinjin tells when he tells a story. Sinjin wears a feather in his hat and moves his lips so slow and deliberate that the great they, his neighbors, can see a whole world through the system that projects their leader into the present, although he is, for all intents and purposes, the creator and proprietor of technology that renders him absent. This change in volume can be converted into mechanical work by steam engines and steam turbines. John at Thin understands this as it follows, and so also understands that there is nothing to the idea of the sun moving closer, or at least nothing to Chicago to suggest the constant baking under its burning smaze, that they must all feel in order for the system to unfold itself across a multi-dimensional threshold. Steam pla engines played a central role in the Industrial Revolution, and modern steam turbines are used to generate electricity. As such, please, John at Thin says Benny's floating watch and Benny's smoldering bones and the absence of Sinjin amid the steaming augury of Benny's intestines, you must direct the action of your Chicago neighbors through the system. The system is not merely collective interpretation, but collective action, a seamless blend of the world and the idea of the world. If liquid water comes in contact with a very hot substance, such as lava or molten metal, it can create a steam explosion. Therefore, says Sinjin Steam, when the moment comes, when the crisis reveals its underlying mathematical structures, this knowledge will guide you to act in a new type of concert, to experience a new sort of collectivity, Chicago United. Steam explosions have been responsible for many foundry accidents and may also have been responsible for much of the damage to the plant in the Chernobyl accident. So it follows, John Athen Gertzer, you must take this boning knife and express the relation between information and its medium in a manner best understood within the logic of Chicago's coming thermodynamic phase diagrams for steam, such as a temporary entropy diagram that will prove everything, yes, everything, when you thrust it into the flesh of the sun. Take this knife, my brother, and cut us further from this awful truth. Thank you. Yeah. It makes more sense if you hear all the other parts. Steamhouse by David Schneiderman. Please tune in next week for part five.